Welcome back to Life Lessons. Today we are going to look at what is schizophrenia. Last night a friend and I were discussing when it is reasonable to apply the label schizophrenic to people. For the record, it is not just your thoughts. Since we have positive and negative thoughts, it is much more than that. Remember, we can't be positive all the time, especially in the face of adversity. Moreover, being positive all the time is not realistic. We can't just keep our heads up in the clouds looking through rose-colored glasses like that. No, sir. Schizophrenia isn't about refusing food from other individuals. Bearing in mind that individuals have their own dietary preferences as well as cultural norm and their own standard of judging cleanliness. However, we should question everything we read and conduct more research in order to enlighten ourselves. Everything isn't as clear cut as it may seem. For the record, people are not born schizophrenic. Mental illnesses such as schizophrenia have no single cause. It is believed to be the result of a combination of psychological, biological, economical and social factors interacting to produce disease. Examples of these factors are abuse, whether it is physical, mental or psychological, drugs, pollution and trauma. This is called the biopsychosocial model and according to statistics, there is only 1% of the general population that have this illness. Some practitioners think that the signs of schizophrenia may not be obvious, but then why would someone treat an individual for a disease that has no sign? This doesn't make sense at all. Moreover, according to the literature, the common and specific clinical features which should make one person suspect schizophrenia or often loud, nonsensical, unconnected speech, a sort of word salad. While talking, the patient shifts from one topic to another completely unrelated topic without realizing that they don't make any logical sense. Um, smiling and laughing to oneself without any obvious reason at all. Walking around without clothes and other form of uninhibited behavior. Acute, violent, unprovoked behavior. Tearing of one clothing. Sitting in one position for hours or even days. The patient stop taking baths and start looking unkempt, haggard and disabled. When the patient is alone, he can hear voices talking to him, and this is what we call hallucinations. Yes, hallucinations, hallucinations are either, are tactile, either tactile, auditory, auditory, or, or visual. Visual hallucination means auditory. that the person is seeing something that is not there. An auditory hallucination, the person is hearing something that is not there. Okay? While tactile hallucination, the person is feeling something that isn't really there. So, these are the type of hallucination we're talking about. But hallucination is not just a feature of schizophrenia. It could be from a high fever or drug or low blood sugar and the person started hallucinating. And that doesn't mean that the person has schizophrenia. Besides, Hallucinations are temporary. However, they are a recurrent symptom of neurological diseases such as Parkinson's disease, Ekbaum's syndromes, and delirium tremens, as well as schizophrenia. Patients who experience phantom limb pain also experience a type of tactile hallucination. And tactile hallucinations are caused by drugs again, such as cocaine and alcohol and many other. Auditory hallucinations, on the other hand, are false perception of sound, 
an individual hearing non-existent sound, voices telling him to do something. These are described as the experience of internal words or noises that have no real origin in the outside world and are perceived to be separate from the person's mental process. However, I have never seen a real schizophrenic, except for those that were drug-induced and those whom were described as catatonic. I think we need to explore this topic some more. But for the record, we cannot assign labels loosely to individuals. It takes a skilled practitioner to diagnose people, not a layman.